On today's episode, we're going rogue. Fuck you, Mike Tyson. Get over here. <laughs> Mike Tyson fuck out. Mike Tyson not to fuck out. Uh. Welcome to episode 7 of the Super Media Brothers podcast. I'm Midnight Agent Raw. I'm Okami. What's up, motherfuckers? Mm-hmm. Uh. It's been a while. Yeah, we are back from that holiday hiatus. Yes. Spending time with the people. And all that fun stuff. And all that fun stuff. Opening presents and shit. Starting the new year and whatnot. That's right, but the only presents missed was... That was our Us, presence. <laughs> our gracious our bodies. Mm, mm. Just imagine those bodies. I can hear all y'all's dicks getting hard right now. That's just right. Just, listen. Just listen. Oh, oh, that went... Damn. That was like a wave of audience just going... A boners. Mm. Literally, that was bone snapping boners. <laughs> boners. Boners. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> with nice boners. Mm. <laughs> oh. Speaking of boners... Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers all over the place. So if you don't want this movie spoiled for you, get the fuck out. Of course, we're talking about Rogue Rogue One. One. (laughs) We're just... All together now. (sighs) (laughs) Where's that guy on that video when you need him? Just... mm. I know. Rogue One. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Shit. But yeah, okay. So... The the massive collection of boners that popped also were probably popped during the midnight previews on Thursday and opening weekend and from there on out. Let's be real. They're probably still popped right now. Yeah. And they're having to go to a doctor to see this and like, I can't do anything about this. It's, it's Star Wars. It's understandable. It's, go hang a coat or something. It's Star Wars. Go, go get a hat and put it on there. I mean, something. But, yeah, I basically did more research... In general, because I actually read the novel that came before Rogue One, which was the um, Catalyst story. Yeah. And it basically explained the whole ordeal about what happened with Jen's parents. Okay. Um, Galen, Orso, and um, I can't remember her, the wife's name. But just to be clear and everything, this is a (laughs) spoiler-based podcast. If you have not seen the movie, like he said, get the fuck out of here. And... Um, <clears throat> just forewarning, boners may happen again upon listening. You may be piercing through the headset at this point. We'll be seeing your boner pop out of the speaker. So. Of course, if anybody that's a Star Wars fan gets a boner, it's us. That's the sound it makes. Put that away. Yeah. Oh. Okay, sorry. Oh. I was having fun with it. <laughs> it's going choom, choom. Wow. <sighs> okay, but, but that's weird because they had only one lightsaber in this whole entire movie. Yep, and uh, I was hoping for that. <laughs> I knew hoping for that. <laughs> yeah, we will definitely get to that later. But man, let's talk about how well developed this was. Definitely, it was hard for me to sit there and listen to people say this was better than Empire Strikes Back. That's how good it was. So, I was in denial the entire time until I saw the movie. After watching it only once, that is... It's flip-flopping back and forth between that and uh, Epinar Strikes Back. Because the quality of cinematography, for one, is superb. Um, Thank you, Gareth Edwards. Definitely. The... (laughs) I mean, the action sequences, the moments where it paused and has those tensions of drama and personality conflicts and, you know, stuff like that. It was just so, so magnificent. Um, Thank you, Gareth Edwards, again. And then all the angles and camera shots that, you know, made you feel like you were in that moment. Because not many movies actually do that very well where you're sitting there just walking through the streets like in, um, I can't remember the name of that city that got blown to shit. Yes. Um... But they were walking through the streets and they had those uh, troopers patrolling. And it just, you saw everything going on. I was like, oh shit, something about to go down. Right? You knew it. I loved it. Like you were mentioning, like the cinematography. What I was going to say on top of, like, being up there, to me also, being up there with Empire, 
it felt like a 1970s, 1980s Star Wars film. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the look and the plot, everything about it made minus, it feel... Minus the crawl. There was no crawl. No. In the beginning. No. But that's not a bad <clears throat> thing. Because they told us, since it was announced, that this is a separate story outside of the main story. So this is like a telling of what happens between episode end of two all the way to episode four. Well, think about it like this. Um, no opening crawl, but this movie is basically the literal opening crawl of episode four mm-hmm. put on screen rather than read in short form. Yep. Short form. That's that's actually what I wrote down. I was like, this movie is the opening crawl for A New Hope. Mm-hmm. So A new crawl. Yes! <laughs> Every time I hear crawl, I think about son-in-law. Mm. <laughs> uh, Crawling back to this. Right? <laughs> Fucking, uh... Can you see Darth Vader? Going to Jakku to stop on some Jedis. <laughs> Why do you sound like Bane? Sorry, I didn't mean to sound like him. <laughs> Were you hoping for something different? <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> you were wrong. I was born in the Death Star. <laughs> I was born in the Force, molded by it. <laughs> I was Fuck. born with no legs. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, shit. You think you had the high ground. You? <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> I didn't either. That's why I'm fucked up. <laughs> That's why I was bought with no legs. You don't know the meaning of low rock bottom even. <laughs> Fuck. Mustafar low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, uh, we're not. No. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, opening crawl was basically the movie, or Rogue One for episode four is the opening crawl, obviously. Yes. Um, you know, good cinematography, good development of characters, good dialogue. My God, like, just the amount of conflict, the amount of drama, the the atmosphere of the movie. Like, you knew you were in Star Wars already, but at the same time, it's like, you felt for these people at the same time. But outside of all that, you had the one comedic relief that was, um, what was his name? The robot, the droid. Oh, shit, um. B2. No. Oh, fuck! See, it was C something. Please, it wasn't C three PO. No, definitely, it definitely wasn't. Even though they were in there for a short minute, <laughs> not even that. Oh no, he wasn't in there for a short minute. Oh, we're, no, C three PO was. C three PO and R two. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Talking shit at each other like always. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. K two S O. Thank you, Alan Tudyk. My God. That was probably my second favorite droid next to HK-47 from The Old Republic. Because right? Because his sarcasm is just so blunt and plain, but it's just hilarious. He's sitting there in the ship trying to... Um, they're going to um, that city, Jakku City or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, Jen had a hand, or had a pistol, and he looks at him and goes, <laughs> You're letting her take a pistol and you won't give me one? You know what she's going to do with that, right? The probabilities of her using it against you? Very high. Very, very high. Yes. And he was just flat with that. I was losing my shit the entire time. I loved it. Um, my favorite, my favorite character was Donnie Yen's character in the movie, the uh, the blind man. Forces with uh, I am with him with the force, and the force is with me. Yes, that he was so good. That dude is a bad motherfucker. He ain't got see shit. Mm mm. I just love that he just knows where everything is, and he just goes off of that. Like, I know that's how people, you know, usually with a handicap like that are. They kind of have better senses around them, but the Force was strong with him, so he can sense everything. Dude, imagine if he was trained with a uh, dual-sided lightsaber. Like, everybody like, be fucked. Like Maul? What? Mm-hmm. Holy fuck. Dude. Everybody be fucked. Oh, yeah. But he chose not to. No, and he was even more badass. I mean, obviously the Stormtroopers still can't hit a motherfucking thing, but dude, he was laying waste to them bitches. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck you. Stepping on their toes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. Oh, did it hit your toe? Pop. Yes. And yeah. uh, his buddy with the... with The uh, the freaking Gatling gun laser rifle, yeah. I love their interaction together. It was... It reminds me if you and I were in the Star Wars universe, like, mm-hmm. completely. Like, just... Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm one with the force of forces with me. And you're just like, shut up. Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> Damn. Damn, Cody. <laughs> um, 
But no, I, I I loved everything about this movie. Um, the uh, the action sequences, for fuck's sake. I mean, this movie had so much of that going on. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, like at the ground level, you're kind of in the middle of it all. Especially with the at like crawling in, and you see the rocket launcher hit that one in the face, and it just turns over. It's like, bitch, really, dude? Yeah, pow! Thank <laughs> fuck, dude, because. Oh, two things I want to say about that. Uh, first off, thank you again to Gareth Edwards for... Uh, Gareth Edwards, if anybody out there is listening doesn't know, he directed the 2014 Godzilla. So, going into this movie, he already had that mindset of monstrosity from ground level. Mm-hmm. He made the eight AT-80s look imposing as fuck in this movie. He made them look dangerous. He made them look like they were going to fuck shit up. Mm-hmm. Unlike Empire, where they were some weak ass pussy, weak bitches. ass bumbling fucktards. Yeah, all because of a tow cable and two pilots. Yeah, uh, but one thing I loved about this entire sequence of uh, movie was there was literally no, I mean, there was no hope for any of those people in general. No, nope. but that there was a new hope at the end. So they made this feeling of dread just carry on through the entirety of the movie, and probably besides the ATAT scene and. Another scene I'm going to get into in a little bit. Oh, God, yeah, I know what you're But <laughs> the fucking Death Star using its partial power... To just on, knock out cities. and Yeah, it just literally blew a little tiny shot at that city and just, like, waved. And it was so well-crafted and so well-done on his end to make it to where they were flying through that whole entire wave. Just... Yes. That feeling of doom was yeah. well done on his part. I love that scene for it. I like that the entire movie just had this foreboding sense of impending doom. Just the entire fucking time. Everybody's fucked. Just, let's put this out. It should have been the opening crawl. Everybody be fucked. Get with it. Rogue One, a new nope. <laughs> like, for real. Nope. A, a few nopes. A few nopes. Uh, the, oh, yeah. The second thing I was going to talk about, and we'll get back to this uh, with Gareth, was um, his his use of camera work or his direction of camera work with, uh, like we were mentioning earlier, all the, like the grounding fight sequences. There were a lot of gunfire, a lot of... Because, I mean, we'll get into it, obviously, again later. One lightsaber throughout the whole fucking movie. And this was mostly done with, like, the turrets, the, uh, the, the TIE fighters, the X-Wings. You name it. It was gunfire, the whole movie. And mm-hmm. it felt like a war movie. Though. I mean, it was a war Guerrilla movie. Guerrilla warfare, dog fighting. Yeah, yeah that, that's... Exactly. It felt mm-hmm. dirty. It felt rough and grim. gritty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm, gritty gritty mm. I like them when they're gritty <laughs> Tarkin best performance yeah for a dead guy <laughs> dude it took me a minute I forgot that he had passed oh yeah and I was like oh I was like I, for, I don't know why I thought well they they updated the fuck out of this archive footage and then I turn and I'm like <sighs> very well done until he starts talking. The only time that you can tell he's been digitally rendered is when he talks because his mouth, you know, is not, stiff. And yeah. it looks it looked great. But for, for me, people who know better, yeah, they like see those game. little Yeah, exactly. It just I, I thought of a pun just now and it's so fucking funny. Peter pushing daisies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, oh. you're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> but no, he Fuck for a, he was the, he was the most imposing dead guy ever because I mean you but looked the, at him and but he, the fuck be, to be honest I mean he's probably the best act like performance in the whole fucking movie to be honest with you because he was just that imposing that intimidating with a CGI animation like they basically took how he was as a fucktard in episode four and said you know what <laughs> a fuck Tarkin even a fuck Tarkin yeah <laughs> grandma fuck Tarkin <laughs> my fucking my fucking Tarkin. <laughs> <laughs> I I even put in the idea on Facebook a while back. It's like, why don't they put Peter Cushing and Bill Nye in a staring contest and see how many people are <laughs> fucked around? Because those two faces are so fucking scary, man. They're terrorizing. Like they'll stare at each other, and it literally everybody around them's fucked. <laughs> Who will win? Nobody. That's the new nope. That's the new nope. <laughs> Oh, that's how scary his face is, man. It's so fucking awesome at the same time. I know, and I enjoyed his presence. Also, 
the uh, the way uh, you, everybody knew Darth Vader was going to be in this, but I love that they used him so sparingly. Even the one sequence when he just comes and he just force chokes that little prick face. Um, Ken, Ken or yeah. Kenrick or Fennec? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah, some of the K, but yeah, he was just like, Pfft. yeah. Did he say something like? Uh, be not, be sure not to choke on your own aspirations or some yeah. shit and like that. Yeah, he turns around it's like the that the, the dad jokes came in. Yeah, because he is literally the dad joke of Star Wars. He really is. Don't go choking on your aspirations, Craig. <laughs> oh, thank you again for bringing James Earl Jones back to do that. Oh, I, I love that everybody that was ever involved in Star Wars just never leaves Star Wars. No, of course not. Um, but. The ending, uh, the ending battle when they are trying to get the plans for the Death Star. God, that was so good. Yeah, because oh my god, because you literally saw Vader walking to them rebels. It's like you're fucked. Why not fucking put the damn data drive in the dwarf crack and like go? No, it took some like five minutes to get to that point. He's just slapping people around. But let me just say, like. Like before that happened, like just the the battling on <clears throat> on that that planet with you know the uh, satellite and all that shit, you knew that they were going to get those plans out. Um, they made you think for a hot second they fucking weren't going to though. Yeah, like uh, you didn't know what was going to happen. Fuck no. And um, I want to say that the the beach sequence when the planet's being blown away. Or the base, yeah. That was right out of Watchmen to me when mm. uh, Night Owl and Silk Spectre are in that kind of dream sequence thing where they're on Mars and just... Holding... Yeah. yeah. Embracing uh, death. Yeah. Literally. And that's another thing that I loved about this movie. They didn't give you any redeeming factor right up until the very end because every main character fucking dies. Pretty much. I, they, were, they were the last hope for the rebellion. I cried one time. I cried one time as well. I almost cried a few other times, but that. F- I know which one you're gonna say. I think when Jen met her father again. No, that okay. I didn't cry at that one. I almost did. But I knew what was gonna happen because of the story I read beforehand, and I, I was like, "Man, I'm gonna fucking lose it," because I saw it happening. It's like whenever she saw um, Galen from a distance, like, "Yep, father." Father and I was just like, oh fuck, and then the <laughs> fuck. fucking and then the fucking um the X wing shot it, that that platform and it's like that was it. Yep, done. And I was just like, it was like episode six all over again. Whenever Luke cradled his father, I was like, oh god, here it comes. And I lost it. Oh, I couldn't handle that shit. No, I cried when, oh boy, walked all the way. Through gunfire. Oh, yeah. When he was holding the staff, he's like, yeah. I am one with the force. The force is with me. And he was just like, pew, 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 just dodging every fucking bullet without even doing anything to go hit that switch. Hits the switch. Gets nailed by, by explosion debris. And dies in his friend's arms. And his friend finally Loses starts the chant. Shit. Finally says that to him. I was crying because I was like, this motherfucker didn't say it the whole fucking movie. And now he realizes. And he's going blasting the fuck out of people. Just... Fuck you. And gets shot, gets picked right back up. Fuck you. It's Chewy and Han all over again. It man. is, man. <laughs> and seriously, though, uh, but that was the thing that hope is made of. Death. Let's go back to where you started with Vader boarding that fucking rebel ship. <laughs> Guys, look, okay. This is the thing, like, this sequence is the things that horror is, like, is made of. Like, mm-hmm. like real horror. This played out like a fucking horror movie sequence, and I, I think that's why I fangirled as hard as I did whenever that happened. I was like, fuck! There is no light. That saber hits, and there, it's just red glow, and you see the mask. The outline. And you see all these motherfuckers that are armed to the teeth, ready to take him out, and they can't fucking do it. It's like watching Freddy just take out everybody. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, not Freddy, uh, Jason, I'm sorry. Either or. Like, Anybody. It really is, though. Michael, somebody. It don't matter. He's just going to walk up in that bitch and be like, um, hi. Oh, just him. 
And he was just manhandling them half the time, like throwing them against the wall and the ceiling, chopping them up, deflecting blaster bolts and everything. Like he was oh. true Vader form. I think that's what I was geeking out about the most. It was like, fuck, we have Vader <laughs> in a newer Star Wars film. Because if you know anything about the old Star Wars films, yeah, they're classic saber battles, and it, it's more like um, it's more like medieval fighting style in the old movies like very theatrical very much so in these new movies it's like shit this is the first time you see vader fucking deflecting shit with his saber and just just actually murdering people yeah i mean flat out just but see that makes me want to know if at any point they're going to do a um movie sequence based off of the star killer uh, storyline because there was an apprentice he had at one point it was right along the lines of episode four and five. Um, his name was Starkiller, and he was literally like a death machine of the force. Like, he would just have a lightsaber and just murder the fuck out of people. I want to see that raw intensity in Star Wars when it comes to the lightsaber fights. Oh, man, that'd be fucking insane. Because whenever you see the game, the opening like trailer for the game was they had a sequence where he would pick up an ATSD by the force and just crush it into a block and just slam it in the ground. Yeah. I have not seen that intense of force use and Jedi power outside of the video game area. <coughs> it's yeah. I'd like to see that too, just because um the um superpower beatdown with Vader and Batman when he gets he gets blasted with all that shit and he gets so pissed off that he just takes the bat wing and just crushes rips it. it a fucking part, man. Mm-hmm. And uses the force in such a way that when he... That thing explodes. He saved Batman's entire fucking body from any kind of debris damage just so he could break his his fucking neck, man. Like, Like, that's Darth Vader, man. (laughs) That aspect and that part of the movie is what I'm, like, excited about. Because now they are showing, like, the brutal side of the force versus being the the flourishing and, you know, the elegancy of it. There's actual killing involved. Yeah. Like in the Clone Wars, I mean, the Clone Wars, they had a lot of that, but they didn't dis- depict it in the movie. They depicted more in the animation, the series. It wasn't really that brutal, um, but I want to see that more intense, more like horror aspect where you have like this entity, this dark, badass force coming at you, and you don't know what to fucking do, but just try, and then he just kills you anyway. Right. I think, <clears throat> from, okay, I'll throw you one better than that. If you want to do the Star Killer thing, that'd be cool too. I would love to see. I would love to see Darth Vader between Episode Three and Rogue One. Like, like becoming one with the idea that he is Vader now. Yeah, I mean, we get a glimpse of oh, he's in the suit in Episode Three. That's pretty much it. Then Rogue One, he is Darth Vader already, and you're like, okay, well, he's this tyrannical motherfucker. Mm-hmm. What, what transpired between? Then, like, I want to see the Death Star being constructed. It's like, already, it's already there. I want to see it actually being done. Vader and Tarkin, you know, just all that shit. I, mm. I would like to see a Star Wars movie focusing specifically on the dark side of the Force. That might be more along of, of Netflix, maybe, versus an actual film film, because I don't see... I would them. enjoy that more. I know. And I'm 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 saying that because we I've already seen Vader pretty much in his prime to to an extent. Yeah. We've seen enough of him to know that he's a B A M F. So Bamf! now they're doing um, Han Solo's solo solo story, ha, <laughs> to where we get to see what happened between um, whenever I guess he became a smuggler or anything, and what happened when Chewie became involved because obviously. Um, they had like a life, um, what is it called in that era? It's some kind of a pact where if you save the Wookiee's life, they become like loyal to you till the death. The yeah. Part. So they had a life pact because apparently Han saved him from being uh, in captivity from slavery. And so now Chewie follows along with him no matter what. So now I want to see how that transpired. Right. When it became ride or die. Yeah, and it would give much more depth to the fact that Chewie goes insane when Han Solo's killed by his kid. Speaking of death, now Leia's no longer. Yeah, I was actually going to say we could probably uh, cap this one off with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the end of the movie, 
they actually get the plans to the Death Star to Princess Leia. To a CGI Leia. Yeah, I mean, CGI Leia, off, well, CGI slash, like, Carrie Fisher actually mo-capped that, and then they put her younger face on her. But, we all know now, yeah, yeah. General Leia is no longer with us. No, she's not. <clears throat> and it's sad because uh, she, Carrie Fisher finished shooting episode eight. So I want to know how the fuck they're going to explain that in episode nine. nine. Unless well, they somehow rewrite with a body double, like she gets fucking pla- like plastered. No. To death, which would suck. No. They would have too much respect for her to actually do anything like that. They would have to give her some kind of proper send-off. They need to do what they did with Paul Walker in the Fast franchise and let him ride off in the sunset, like, still alive as a character. Because I feel like you could kill Princess Leia. Han Solo's already dead. <laughs> kill Princess Leia, it's like, well, fuck them. They're, they're went the actual hope of the entire franchise. I don't know, like, I can, I can definitely see him, like, writing in that Chewbacca is just literally just done with life because now he lost his friend, his best friend, his best friend's wife. Now what is he going to do? Like, he literally has nothing besides, um, uh, 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 Ray. Well, maybe that's what happens. I mean. <sighs> it would be even more bittersweet, which I'm, I'm still, I am still on the... Um, the train that Ray isn't is a Kenobi. I still think Ray's a Kenobi. I mean, if she's not a Skywalker, like a true Luke Skywalker, you know, offspring, she has to be a Kenobi. That's what I'm saying. Because that's the only thing that makes sense <laughs> with being so strong with the Force. Like she's either with Skywalker, being how powerful he is now, or being with Kenobi before he passed. Well, and think about it this way: that could be what, like, whenever they see each other at the end. That connection would be there because it's like he like maybe Luke is the only one that knows that that is Ben Kenobi's kid or granddaughter. You never fucking know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, fuck, like that's the last of that bloodline. I failed an entire. entire. And in Luke's mind, he failed an entire, you know, a group of would be Jedi. You know, because of Kylo. Yeah. So. Uh, God, that, just that one scene in episode 7 just bam it's like oh shit it, right but uh, but yeah dude definitely uh, definitely rest in peace to Carrie Fisher man that was uh, she was a fucking rock star man I don't give a mm-hmm. fuck what you say that was like one of the last true female actress like rock star motherfuckers ever badass bitch man yeah, and I mean, it is not not just a Star Wars franchise. You, you know what my favorite thing that Carrie Fisher ever fucking did was, besides mm. Star Wars? And the Blues Brothers, when she kept trying to kill Jake the whole fucking time yeah. because they were actually a thing? Yeah. <laughs> and then he fucking, he takes his sunglasses off, and she falls for him again, and then he fucks her over, so she's put the flamethrower at their ass. I remember I, that. I loved it, man. Um... I I'm sad. I'm glad that they that she was able to finish episode eight, but I'm very sad that she won't uh, be around to see the fruits of that labor, and uh, she definitely she won't be around to see the end of that. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also Debbie Reynolds, her mom passing away like a day later. That like that. I'm not trying to end this on a som- like a somber note, but. That to me is what I call dying of a broken heart. I mean, literally the next day, yeah. Uh how can we end this on a happy? Okay, maybe get the dog Gary Fisher to be in episode nine as a doggy Jedi, a doggo, mm-hmm. a puppo Jedi, <laughs> one with the wolf. <laughs> yes, and they just look at him. He bark, 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 wolf. Borf. Borf. Sniff. Sniff. Bark. Boo. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be a Sith pup. I can just see it happening. Sith pup? Yeah. Sith puppies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come to the dark side of the dog. Mm-hmm. The dog side? The doge. <laughs> the doge side of the force. Welcome to my dojo. <laughs> <laughs> my dojo do. That's right. But yeah, Rogue One, guys. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, um, and you still listen to this... Um, sorry. Not sorry. But... Go oh, see by it the again. way, spoilers. Yeah, yeah, go see it again. I, and then I, again, and then again. And again, and again, and again. 
I'm going to buy this as soon as it comes out on Blu-ray. I still need to get all seven on Blu-ray. I might wait until episode nine's out, man. Because if they put out like one giant box set, I'll just buy the whole fucking thing. The spooge on it. The yeah. more money. I will splooge. I will splooge on it. I will spooge on it. I will... Then watch it and then spooge again. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if they don't make the box set into a giant Death Star piece that you can slide the discs out of, I will be sad. I'll be writing Lucasfilms and Disney be like, look, you fuckers fucked up. You missed the boat. Yeah. You, I, I'm deeply disappointed in you. You missed the falcon point here of a box set. I had I had to. I'm, I'm not sorry about that joke at all. It's okay. You're a dad. It's okay. I am a dad. Dad Making jokes roll. Dad jokes. dad jokes roll. Fuck you. It was so punny. It was so punny. You want to roll that drummer? Hey, drummer! Is he here? No, he's on the floor. Mike Tyson was our drummer, remember? Oh, fuck! He hadn't recovered yet because we both punched him this time. Mm -mm. I guess I'll do it. This is fun. Yeah. It's kind of fun. I'm using his hands to drum since he's on the ground. That's right. Uh, Wake up, fucker! <laughs> well, we, uh, we're back on a weekly program schedule, so uh, until next time, shades on! We're off.